Hi, I'm Ben Wadilla. Today on Saturday Mechanic, we're in Baltimore at Orm's Garage. And we're going to fix this viewer's Mercedes Benz. Hi, so this is Pat. She wrote in to us after seeing a couple of our episodes, and as a result, we're in Baltimore now to fix her car. Um, tell us a little bit about what's wrong with it. I mean, it looks like it's seen a little bit of damage. Yes. Well, first of all, thank you so much for coming to Baltimore. I really appreciate it. I watch Saturday Mechanic all the time. I'm like a mechanic <laughs> wannabe, but you're the genius. I don't so, know about that. <laughs> well, so there's actually a lot with the car. There's a problem kind of with the suspension. Yeah. It feels like it springs up and down. Hmm, okay. And I'm not going to use terminology that you're going to understand. Okay, I mean, um, shocks or springs or something like that's going wrong in there. We'll take right, a look at that. Exactly. When I go to stop, um, if I'm going really fast, it gives a kind of a chugging feeling when I'm stopping, so okay. I'm assuming that's the brakes. Sounds like I'm it. I'm assuming that could be it. I think I was told that there was a rear flex disc. I'm not, it's broken. I don't know what that does. <laughs> I figure you do. I, I think um, I got an idea on what it is. We'll take a look. Okay, great, great. So those would be some of the, uh, I guess, priorities to okay. work on. <laughs> Anything else that we need to look into? I think that should do it for the moment. Okay. Well, I guess we'll get to going on it, um, put it up on the lift and tear through it. And uh, I mean, you could probably go uh, go to the coffee shop and wait for us and okay. we'll give you a call when you're ready to rock. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Anytime. So you said you found something, Russ. Yep. See what I found in here? Mm-hmm. I guess Pat was right. That is a broken spring. We're, we're gonna need to pull that out. We're gonna have to replace it. And I recommend that we replace them in pairs. Yep. You wouldn't just put in one, the one broken one. You were just like shock absorbers, brakes and all that, you mm -hmm. do it by the axle. So we're gonna have to pull apart the suspension, pretty much the whole thing, unfortunately. You know, the I, spring compressor. Yep, there's a special Mercedes spring compressor. It's a little different than we use. Uh, this is this is a uh, multi-link suspension, but in, in essence, it's a uh, short, long arm. It has an upper control arm right. and a lower control arm. Okay, it's not a McPherson strut. We just need to safely take this apart. Right. And remember, springs are loaded with energy. There's a lot of energy in there. I mean, yeah. you don't you don't want to do anything halfway with the spring involved, especially a cracked one. Yeah. So what we're going to do? Actually, the cracked one is less tension than the new one. Okay but we're gonna to need to safely lower the control arm, squeeze the spring, squeeze the new one, put it in, and safely attach mm -hmm. that. It'll be fun. It'll be fun, it'll be work. <laughs> <laughs> so the problem is we have to get this spring, which is you know a foot and a half long, into a space in the suspension that's about a foot, and that means we've gotta compress it. We've got a special tool for that that's specific to Mercedes that we actually borrowed uh, from one of Russ's buddies. Yep, and we, what that's gonna do is it has pl a plate in here, we've already or, installed yep. them, it has a plate in here, and we're gonna use a wrench, and it has a screw, and we're gonna screw this together, and those two plates will come together and squeeze the old spring. Now, it would be really nice if we could just squeeze that spring and pull it out and put a new one in, but the way this suspension is set up, we have to actually take apart the vast majority of it. We have to pop a, an anti-roll bar link, we have to uh, pop the lower ball joint and pull the, uh, the damper off the bottom and then shock absorber. Yeah, that what we can do is then just let the, the suspension drop. That way we you can know, release ben, it. If I was doing this at home and it was on a pickup truck or a, you know something like that with what we call a short long arm suspension, I may just use my floor jack mm -hmm. and do it there. But for video purposes, we do it up in the air and we're using a jack. This is a transmission jack for taking out transmissions or gas tanks. Yep. And so we're new that and this isn't in, in safety. If we did not do that and release those components, that spring would unleash Bang. and go out. We've yep. already compressed the spring slightly, so we've safed the spring. Now we're gonna open up the hinge, if you will, and pull the old spring out. Ben, well, as long as the ball joint's installed, yep. you can take out the damper, the shock absorber mount on the bottom, mm -hmm. and the sway bar uh, mount. So if you could so get let's that. Let's do that, yeah. Do our uh, shock absorber mount. Yeah. And I'll hold, the, I'll hold, hold it on the other this side. side. Okay, and if you can. That's a 16 millimeter on this. And you'll Whoop. notice, and you'll notice Ben and I use hand tools. Most people will have hand tools. In a shop, don't be surprised if they use an air gun or now some of these really nice electrically powered impact wrenches. 
but we're gonna do it slow motion so you can see all that's going on. So I'm gonna loosen up the uh, sway bar sway link. Sway bar link, yep, there we go. Now that is a Torx bit, and a Torx bit is sometimes called a star bit. The mistake you might make is use one that fits in the hole but is not fit and is tight in there. Kind of like putting in the wrong size hex head or Allen head fastener. If you use the right bit and use it properly, these very rarely strip out. I mean, they're capable of some really high torque. Right. We got to loosen the lower ball joint. Yep. Okay. Let me get you, let me set you up the wrench. Let's see here. And uh, that is a big boy. That's yeah. a, uh, let me hold this for you. 22 millimeter. 22 millimeter. Big boy. Okay, I would take that back several threads. And now that is a tapered fit. Yep. And so to break that taper, Strike. You're going to need our a, a persuader. A I believe. persuader. Now, if you look here, there is a strike spot right here. Now, some people say, "Wouldn't I use a ball joint separator, or sometimes called a pickle fork?" I don't like those things. Nah, that's only if I'm going to. Uh, this is a case where I'm not replacing the ball joint, mm -hmm. and there's a rubber part up there that will destroy it. Mm -hmm. I'm separating the ball joint to do other work. All right. Okay. If I were replacing it, different story. Yeah. Okay. So let's just give it a. Yep. It's loose. It's loose. Okay. All right. And you'll notice I tapped it here, not on the threads, mm -hmm. but this is not a pull off the nut and drive the nail. Yes. Yeah. That's yeah. a bad way to do things. You'll end okay. up screwing up the threads on the very okay. end and you'll never and get that back on. And we may be able to. Now, Ben, how about if I pull that nut off right now and, and pull that apart? What'll happen? I think what we'll find is the whole suspension comes crashing down at us. Right. right? Now we have the spring slightly compressed with yep. our tool in there, mm -hmm. but still, what we've done for safety is we've put this transmission jack underneath here. Now, that'd be rare that a, a, a Saturday mechanic yeah. would have one of these, but a floor jack would work well. You're just going to be working on your hands and knees. This yep. makes it easier for us to show you how to do that. Yep. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to jack this up here, hold that, and, I've, and I've made sure that I have clearance so that my tool, I can get to my tool right. here, okay? I want to have it. I want to have it out towards the ball joint. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now I've supported it. I really don't have to jack this up. I'm going to go look at there. That bolt that we were that I was fighting with the hammer. Loose now. Um, this wasn't preset. That was just right now. So there's right. our there's our lower shock or damper mount, and this is a gas pressurized shock, and it should just slide up out of here. Or if not, we'll we'll just get the pry bar in there. Okay. Our sway bar link, let's just, because I don't want to lose the fastener, let's put, put that in. aside. And so the only thing holding this right now is that our ball joint. lower ball joint. Mm -hmm. Okay, we've, we've broken the taper on that. So now if we could get that nut off, okay, and a trick you can do, and you saw me, unfortunately I tapped on it without thinking, but I will to tap that apart. What I want us to do is slide towards the back of the car. The whole thing should move away from it. It's a unique ball joint, Ben. It has a 90 degree bend, okay? Now, but it's not unlike many of the import cars have two or three bolts that actually bolt the lower ball joint to the lower control arm. Okay, let's remove that nut. And if, uh, and if right. we did good things in our lives, come this apart. should just there move out of the way, okay? Beautiful. Now, Ben, I'm gonna hold this here can you see where our broken piece is right here? Yep. Our broken piece now is being captured in there, but I'll bet you if I lower this down out of the shock here. It'll come right out. It should come right out. Now I'm just a little bit afraid here, and if I don't want this to all drop on the floor, I could because I have a friend or I didn't have a friend, I would wrap a piece of coat hanger around that. Just hold it And up. maybe grab something here so it wouldn't do that. But I'm gonna very gently lower this. And again, we're gonna now, there we we're go. That's as it. low as she goes. We may need some more room, buddy. I think we're going to need to pry it, actually, pry that lower control arm. All right. I got a little pry bar here. Yeah, there's a big boy floating around. Big boy. Or sometimes we call those big Berthas. And there's our, I've released our, I've released our piece. And, uh, well, I thought I replaced, released our piece, our yep. spare piece. And remember, that spare piece is not, is going to be in our new spring, okay? So we're going to have even a little bit more to mm -hmm. deal with there. We've gained another inch or so. Yep. And in fact, so much so, that's that's out of the way. We can take our block out yep. of the way. Move this out of the way. You know, Ben, if we needed to get this to go down further, I might even put a pry bar in here 
and pry down on the spring. Let's just try that with our little, little pry bar. Our little pry bar, and we may need to go to guns named after Kaiser Wilhelm's mother, Big Bertha. Okay, pull back if you would, please. All right. Okay. Now, Ben, just to caution you, this is when the whole thing may fall out, okay? So, see how I got that clear? There we go. And in a bigger... Jesus Christ. Are you okay? I'm fine. All right, so that was clearly not what was supposed to happen here. That's okay. That's why God gave me... <laughs> That's why God gave me nine and there's hospitals nearby. No, Russ hey, we're is fine. We're okay. Thankfully. Yeah. Yeah, our spring compressor seems to have slipped off and, uh, and gave us quite a scare. But we're going to press on. Yep. Um, that is it's concerning to me because we did all the steps that we should have done it, to avoid that. And we're just going to have to move on. Now, Ben, let me just, you stay there. I got a piece right here. Okay. Here's the piece that was on the, on the end. This was the bottom. Right. Okay. And there's the piece that, that broke off. I always find it interesting when I'm teaching class. I say, look how they always break in a spiral. Because really, it's kind of hard to believe, but a coil spring actually is a torsion bar. It's actually twisting. Mm -hmm. And we can see that right there. Oh, yeah, with that as failure. It, as it compresses, we're just thinking that the coil does that. It's actually, the coil is twisting mm -hmm. like a wound up torsion bar. I digress. So okay. we add another quarter of a turn, basically. So we got to squeeze this probably the same. And, but we had to put the plates back in where, where they were. And we didn't show you this tool. This tool is fantastic. It's, even it's though a, it failed on us. Yeah, well, it's a... <laughs> Might have been user error a little bit. Yeah, okay. So it's probably case, user error. Have, I, have you ever used one of these before? Nope, never. never Nor used. have I. And we're experts, okay? <laughs> but anyhow, you can see here, here's the perch in the bottom. And this is the right diameter for this one. And it fits the spring completely. It has a lip right there, okay? This one, so we assemble this first like that. Right, actually let's just put it on. Okay. So we take the, uh, here's the old. No, the that's old the old spring. one, I'm sorry. This is a new spring. That's a new spring. So you slide that you up You slide that through. And and this, this other plate has a slotted side and you just slide it in like this. And then it grips down, actually if I just pulled this down here. Right, as That it grips in there. That should be just happy dappy, okay? All right, so let's tighten this down and okay. uh, let's tighten that down and go back. And repeat, can we use this tool? Repeat in reverse, as they say. Here, there we are. I gotcha. Have at it. Actually, I'm just do it right there. That should just place right up in there, buddy. Should. All right, there we go. Okay. The reason I stuck that vice grip in there was to keep that plate from moving. And yeah. That's what happened last time. Yeah, we figured out that the plate somehow just doesn't sit like on that on that uh, compressor. So. And we make mistakes also. I didn't read the instructions. And <sighs> again, Lesson learned, right? Yeah. Sometimes when you get to be so smart, you uh, don't need to read instructions. And you know what? Every time I every time I screw something up, comes bite you. There's a Swedish store that sells furniture, okay? I have found if I read the instructions all the way through, I only have to put it together once, okay? Right. The next important step is to attach one of the things that's gonna capture it. Mm -hmm. My, the best thing we could capture is the ball joint. Right, okay? that's, that's the one that does the bulk of the work. Right, so I'm gonna pull this the fastener that we use to hold the lower part of the shock absorber. Yep. I'm going to pull that out of the way. We use that so we could use our large our big pry lever. bar. Yep. Okay. And now what we need to do is we're still we're still not safe yet. Okay. No, we're we're kind of okay. Just chilling in out fact, there. in fact, we need to move our jack in place. All right. Now we're pushing the spring again. Okay. I've got that. I've got the shock absorber lower mount in there. I feel. A lot better. A lot better now. And now it's a matter of taking the whole spindle and 
sticking it onto that horizontal ball joint table. Right, that we which have again is a little bit idiosyncratic for this car. Yep. Okay. And you can turn let's that. Let's see where we're at. Do I need to go up higher? Oh. I can turn that up. Yeah. Wait, wait, let's. I got this. That's as horizontal as I can get it. I need well, to go a little bit higher. Higher. Okay. Hold on. Is it going right in? Uh, it's going in. There we go. Yeah, oh, yeah. You got. Give me just a second. We need this. There we go. There we go. Drop we can drop thing. this out of the way now because we are safe. We're in a safe position. I can remove my helper that I had there holding that plate. The plate's the one that spun on us. There we are. Not and the, and now the torque yet. setting. We all have to get a torque wrench out. The torque setting for that, I believe, is 118 foot pounds. We're going to need to torque all these fasteners to specification. Okay? You bet. Where would we find those torque specifications? You want to find a, find them in a really good service manual. Don't buy the junky ones. Okay. <laughs> the service manual is that the one that's in the glove box? Nope. Nope. That's your owner's manual. That will tell you how to change your windshield wiper fluid or add add wiper fluid, but it won't tell you what the torque spec is on anything. Okay. It may only have the torque spec for the wheel, lug nuts, or in this case, lug bolts. Other than that, we would have to go to the service manual. I would not rely on an online forum unless we were we had German engineers that were on the other end of that <laughs> other end of that ether. Okay. All right. So I've got the uh, sway bar link reattached. We'll torque that as well. And we'll put this bolt on next for the uh, bottom side of the shock absorber. I'm sorry, put the nut on. Run that down, we'll torque that as well. All right, so we've got this torque wrench. Nope. There you go. Torqued. When it clicks, it has to turn and then click. Yep. So what was that? That was 118. 118. Okay, All right. now did we get the uh, sway bar link in yep. place? Yep. Okay, now that, that one, I'll, re I'll, I'll adjust your torque wrench. That one's 37 foot-pounds. This is like a micrometer, Ben. And I just go walk down here and I find... 30 and then I find, seven, right? No, actually this goes by 20, by 15s. Oh, there you go. So I go to 15 and then I lock it. And I can swap. I can get that torque wrench. I can borrow those at about any, uh, any tool store to torque something. It has to rotate and then click. If it clicks right away, you don't know if it's at the setting. So the Kettering, there's the click. Yep, so that's right. correct. So we have the ball joint correct. We have that. The last one is the mm -hmm. shock absorber. Yep. That's at uh, 20 even there. Okay, now come up about seven. There we go. There you go. Okay, now lock that, turn that. Every torque wrench is different. All right, so let's torque down that, uh, Let that me, shock. That's at 16 millimeter on both sides. So you're going to torque it on the nut side and mm -hmm. I'm going to hold the cap screw side here yep. to back you up. All right. Ben, I noticed you have a you have an extension on that. Is that going to affect the torque at all? Sure won't. Why not? Anything that goes into the extension has to come out the other end. So the torque translates. So any so any slop that's in there doesn't matter. Nope. Okay. I've noticed it matters when I use an air gun. The more extensions I put on that I lose I lose power. But that's a different thing. Right. Here we're setting a specific torque. Okay. Not just, nope, oh, there we there go. There it is. All okay. right. Now, if it was offset, though, if I had this offset, then I'd have to do mathematics and yep. add for the length so I could get my foot pounds correct. Yep. So I guess now we can pull that spring compressor out that I nearly, so. nearly took your finger. Well, that will, uh, <laughs> otherwise, uh, our customer, we have a very expensive uh, uh, accessory. and. I don't like accessories that aren't duct tape. Yeah. You know that. <laughs> All Might right, be. we just need to loosen this, Ben. It should be kind of loose already since like we've compressed. See. We've compressed the spring. Oh yeah, look at that. Come right out. And this side, this plate will come right out, and the whole thing Slide should drop. Up. All right. We got our lower plate. All right, and there's the lower plate. We've both got all of our fingers, thankfully, uh, and that pretty much wraps up this job. We'll throw the other wheel on and actually work on the other side because like we said before you do both springs at the same time but uh, if you have any questions feel free to leave them in the comment section below